Following are the some points that illustrate this. We know the way Rasulullah Sallallahu gave them tafsir. Number one, as needed. Number two, based on the revelation of the ayah. If the ayah was not revealed, he wouldn't give them the tafsir. So let's say that Rasulullah Sallallahu offered them the tafsir based on the revelation of the Quran. Now, when the Sahaba compiled Al Quran Kareem in the days of Umar, uh, Abu Bakr, and Uthman in one folder, and now the Quran is in this chronological order from Surah Al Fatiha to Surah Al Nas, and then some Sahaba started teaching people, they started teaching them tafsir based on this order. That's different than the order Rasulullah had. They didn't see themselves in, uh, forced to follow. The chronological, the revelation order of the of the in the tafsir, but rather the current chronological order. That's one point. They, the Sahaba did it different than the way Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi uh, had. Another point, actually, the very compilation of the Quran came in one folder. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi asked the Sahaba to write, and the Quran was preserved, but that written material was not compiled in one folder until the days of Abu Bakr Siddiq. Not only this, in the days of Uthman, we find out that he must uh, recopy that copy and send copies to different areas in order to, uh, the codex of Quran Karim was established. So that was not done in the days of Abu Bakr. So the Sahaba always found a certain area for their innovative ideas. And they don't have to stick to the very same style. Another uh, point, Rasulullah didn't teach Arabic. Actually, he sent some people to learn other languages. The Sahaba started teaching Arabic. Why? Like we said, because they were built in such a way that they need to face the challenges facing them. Now you have people don't have Arabic. How? What to do? So. It's their obligation to teach them Arabic. So they started teaching people Arabic upon uh, realizing that this is what is needed. Even, even the class format was not there during the time of Muhammad Sallallahu It became apparent during the days of Sahaba and the Tabi'een. Like we mentioned, despite all of this, the Sahaba maintained the supremacy of revelation maintain the Quran and Sunnah being the frame of reference. And this can be illustrated in many examples. One example, you know, when, when Rasulullah died, passed away, Umar was shocked. And only Abu Bakr reminded him of the ayah. Muhammad is not but a messenger. Other messengers have passed on before him. So if he was to die or killed, would you turn away? So Umar realized that he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, died. And the Sahaba maintained the linkage between the one who wants to educate, uh, learn Islam and, 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 and the Wahi. No separation at all. And they did not link people to their personal personalities at all. And maintain the linkage between the knowledge and the practice. They wouldn't memorize certain ayat before exercising them and understanding them and applying them. Another point is that the companions used even to correct each other in referring them to the frame of reference. We know the incident uh, and the dialogue that happened between Umar al-Khattab and Abu Ubaidah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be, be pleased from both. When they were pro, uh, about to enter a town, the, the news came that there is communicating disease, infective disease in that town. So Umar al-Khattab didn't want to get in, in order to maintain the health, the uh, uh, situation of the army. So Abu Ubaidah told him, oh, are you running away from Qadrullah? Why, do you, are, why are you afraid? You should get in. You shouldn't run away from Qadrullah. So Abu Umar ibn Khattab, he told him, I wish that someone else said this, oh Abu Ubaidah. Yes, I'm running away from one qada, qadar Allah to qadar Allah. And he brought him again the example of a person, a shepherd. He has livestock and he wants to feed the livestock. And he is having two places of properties. One is drought 
and the other one is with the grass. So which property should the shepherd go to? He told him the grassy one. He told him, if he goes to the grassy one, is he going against Qadrullah? He said, no. And if he chose out of his mistake to go to the other property, is he doing it out of Qadrullah? He told him, no. But which one he should use? He should use the right option. So he told him, this applies now. So if I'm staying off, I'm holding off the army, I'm doing it by, Qadr, by Qadrullah. So why should I go and take the risk and say, yeah, I want to go and take the risk because this is my Qadr. So he got this from, the, from, from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another example is that very well-known example in the Seerah, when Abu Bakr Siddiq was told about, from Quraysh about the night journey of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. أَتَدْرِي مَا يَقُولُ صَاحِبُكُ Do you know what your fellow is saying? What is he saying? He is claiming that he went last night to Jerusalem and came back in the same night. So Abu Bakr Siddiq was smart. The source of information to him is not Quraysh. So he answered very uh, smart answer. He didn't want to say yes or no. He told him, in the, in, he gave conditional answer. إِنْ كَانَ قَالَهَا فَقَدْ صدق. If he said that, he spoke the truth. Maybe he didn't say it, but if he said that, he spoke the truth. They told him, how? How do you believe in such thing? Then he gave the answer. I believe in him in things beyond than this. I believe in the news, in the revelation coming to him instantly. So this is the basis for me to accept the report which he is telling us. So all of these examples show us how did the Sahaba get it from Rasulullah and how did they communicate this to the Tabi'een. The Sahaba taught also the Tabi'een to balance their life. There is no conflict between this life and the hereafter. Balance in everything, balance in the education, facing the new challenges. Uh, being attached to the revelation, not to their persona. All of this is without going against the guidance of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at all. And uh, this means that the Sahaba got it right. And we can summarize the method of the Sahaba as being the following. The Sahaba taught the Aqeedah, maintain the Aqeedah in the right way, making it the basis for the life, for the outlook, for the frame of reference. Uh, they maintained it and maintained it and made sure that it, uh, it is established properly and correctly. And as they received it from Rasulullah Sallallahu and paid attention to the correctness of all of this, while at the same time, being able to face the challenges they are facing without finding themselves obligated to follow certain styles and, and the examples which we mentioned. So they lived their life in very dynamic way, maintaining the supremacy of the revelation and being able to face the life challenges. This wraps up the way the Sahaba عليهم, received it from the Prophet And if we compare it to the way that Rasulullah did it, we find out that they did exactly what they received. So it worked. Now, and of course, in this way, they moved it to the Tabi'een. So now it's natural to move on to talk about the Tabi'een. Did they do the same? That's what we'll talk about when we address the era of the Tabi'een. What did they do? How did they face the challenges? Uh, what are the positive points in that era? What about the negative points, if any, in that era, and so on? Inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala.